Hey guys, it's I'm Muzzy, and the first thing I'm going to do today is pull out my script. Um, well, I thought I put it out, but I guess I didn't, so I'll wing it. Um, so, I think we're talking about procrastination. So, you're not a procrastinator, right? False. Um, well, that's all I got. Probably shouldn't have this, so see you later. 3.28 a.m. Hello fellow classmates, Rachel Benton here. Let me pull out my script that I didn't write. Okay, let me actually look one up. Um, oh, here's one by Emma Muzzy. Perfect. So to everyone who doesn't procrastinate, wait, let me rephrase that. To everyone who think they don't procrastinate, here's why we do it. Most people don't realize procrastination is a lifestyle rather than an action. And we all know procrastination is delaying or postponing something, right? Well, there's two types of procrastination, active and passive. Passive procrastinators are either lazy or they just have a life outside school. They typically watch TV or hang out with friends rather than doing their homework. Active procrastinators, on the other hand, are people who make executive decisions as to which assignment they need to get done first. These people's sense of procrastination is not linked to poor time management or planning skills. They don't necessarily want to wait to the last minute, but they have confidence in themselves that they can get it done in a shorter amount of time. So overall, if you're anything like me, you simply refuse to do something because you don't want to do it. You wait until the very last minute and then scramble to finish your assignment. And by that point, you don't even care about your grade. You just want to get it done. Well, how does this help you? Well, since your expectations are lower because you are scrambling to finish the assignment, you'll feel better if you get a good grade, but you're not going to be surprised if you get a bad one. So let's move on to some facts about procrastination. Surveys of students' populations suggest that 85 to 95 percent of students have problems with procrastination. But this is just in school. Let's jump to a bigger sample. How about the United States? In 1978, 5% of the population admitted to being chronic procrastinators, but in 2013, 26% admitted to being chronic procrastinators. So let me put this into perspective. In 1978, the population was approximately 223 million. So that's 11 million people who consider themselves procrastinators. In 2013, the population was 315 million, so that's 82 million people who consider themselves procrastinators. That means there's 71 million more people who consider themselves procrastinators in 2013 compared to 1978. All in all, when teachers give us the amount of work that they do and expect us to finish in time, along with having to do everything else for all your other classes along with your extracurricular activities they're pretty much asking us to build a time machine that freezes time so we can finish our assignments while still getting enough sleep to survive through the day <laughs>